So today we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes. Uh, we're not going to be talking about type 1. But type 2 diabetes is more of a disease of insulin than it is of glucose. Now, let me explain. When you're diagnosed with diabetes type 2, they usually use a blood test to measure how much glucose is in your blood. If it's uh, 126 or greater uh, and tested a couple times, you are a diabetic. So that's called hyperglycemia. This is how they diagnose diabetes type 2. But here's the problem. Retinopathy, that's damage with the retina in your eye. Neuropathy, which is the problem with the nerve in your toes and your fingertips. Nephropathy, which is the problem with your kidney. It's like kidney disease. Hypertension, memory loss, damage with the brain cells, visceral fat, all occur before you get high blood sugar. And this is because the destruction of the eye, the nerve, the kidney, the brain, the heart occurs with high levels of insulin. And it may take 10 to 20 years before you become a diabetic, but in the process, you're getting damage with the retina, the nerve, the kidney, the heart, the brain, and you're getting fatter. So high levels of insulin over a period of time develop a condition called insulin resistance, which I'm gonna talk about, which then lead to high blood sugar. The pancreas, the little beta cells, make insulin. And they go into the cells, the receptors, and they trigger a certain process that creates a different effect. One of the primary functions of insulin is to lower blood sugar. But insulin does a lot more. In fact, insulin goes into every single cell in the body, the immune cells, the red blood cells, the fat cells, the muscle cells. The insulin hormone is very anabolic. So the theme with insulin is to make things bigger, to grow things, it's anabolic. This is why people get fatter with insulin. Now the problem is insulin is very toxic in high levels. So the body actually has to protect itself. So it develops what's called insulin resistance, okay? So insulin resistance is purely a protective survival mechanism against the toxic effects. And I've already covered the toxic effects. As your body develops resistance, then we don't get the feedback loop like we should. And the body makes more and more insulin to try to cope. And now we get even higher levels of insulin. And as things worsen over time, the pancreas gets exhausted and it starts to fail in this compensation. Now, you cannot keep the blood sugar level. So now the blood sugar goes up. It's basically more icing in the cake, which worsens the situation because it's gonna create a lot of oxidation and worsens all these conditions that originated from the high levels of insulin. Now, why is this so important? Because if someone, like your medical doctor, could detect high insulin 10 years ago, they could have done something about it to prevent this problem from happening. And not only that, but if the medical profession could understand this concept, they wouldn't be giving a type two diabetic insulin. They wouldn't give them medication to increase more insulin because all that's doing, it's like pouring gasoline on a fire and it's just gonna make it worse. So it's very, very important when you get your blood test to ask your doctor to always test your insulin levels, your fasting insulin levels, and make sure it's below five. Many times uh, you'll see reference points at normals like eight to 12, um, but so there's a, there's a lack of agreement on what normal is, and that's a whole other video on that, but you wanna keep it five or lower to be safe. All right, so now let me just show you what causes the increase of insulin. Carbohydrates, carbs and protein exaggerate the spike in insulin. So barbecued ribs, adding um, steak and potato, a bun with a hamburger, um, hamburger with uh, uh, Coca-Cola will do it. That really spikes insulin. MSG, monosodium glutamate. Excessive amounts of protein, especially if it's low fat, like whey protein will stimulate insulin. Generally, you don't have to worry about protein in its natural form if it has fat, uh, because for example, if you have the egg white versus the whole egg, the egg white will stimulate more insulin than the whole egg. So the fat is actually beneficial 
to keeping the insulin in check and also realize that the counter hormone called glucagon is triggered when you consume protein. So that does buffer the effect of insulin. So you really don't have to worry too much about uh, doing you know, regular meals with protein as far as insulin goes. Only if it's in a uh, form that's in a powder with really low fat. Frequent eating is a, is a big stimulator of insulin because every time you eat, you trigger insulin. This is a real big one right here. Vegetable oils have been linked to insulin resistance, which is gonna create more insulin. Um, now, to decrease insulin, um, consuming fiber actually will increase uh, butyrate, which actually will help improve insulin resistance, by the way. So that's one, one thing that will help lower insulin is actually just including vegetables in your meal. Doing keto, low carb will do it. Intermittent fasting, apple cider vinegar, certain minerals like potassium, magnesium, chromium, zinc will all lower insulin. Vitamin D will help you lower insulin. Exercise will help lower insulin. Decreasing your stress will lower insulin. And getting good night rest will also help lower insulin. And just make sure uh, the next time you get your blood test, have them test your fasting insulin level. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.